Hello. Hi. This is Melissa. And this is Kat. You guys, my <laughs> laptop ate shit today. It did. R.I.P. So we are recording still, but I have to probably edit this whole podcast. And like... Saturday night. No, I won't have a day because I have to work on Saturday. So, and I won't be going to Horror Nights that night. So I'm very upset about it. (laughs) I'm probably going to be up to like five in the fucking morning editing our podcast. Rippy. It's okay. (laughs) It it is what it is. It is what it is. Hopefully it comes earlier than Friday, but it's supposed to come on Friday. And I will not miss the first night of Horror Nights. I'll miss the second night, but I cannot miss the first night. Right. I'll be there on the third night though. Perfect. Me too. I'll be there every night. (laughs) Oh my gosh. It happens. Life happens. It's funny because my laptop wouldn't turn on. So I brought it to Geek Squad, uh, figuring it was probably a lost cause. Because if your laptop ain't turning on, not good. Not good. And they were very nice. And they were like so apologetic. And I was like, it's okay. It happens. I got Kat and I really big sodas. And so we call Wawa sodas. It's the large sodas from Wawa. We just call them really big sodas. Mine is cherry lime Coke. I just got regular cherry Coke. It's so good. Yay. So this time, we're here to tell you why the parent trap is tragical. Yay! And it's the Lilo version, 1998. 1998. And this was our patron and very, very best friend, Brandy's pick. Miss Brandy. I love her so much. Yeah. So if you guys want an episode dedicated to you, join our Patreon. Yeah. Um, It's also an app. You guys, you don't have to like do your Safari browser or use a computer. There's an app for Patreon. I feel like some people don't know. That. Yeah, the app is actually really great. I use yeah, the app. I use the app. I'm actually a patron of many artists. I think I'm on one. Wow, you're so, so supportive. <laughs> Support the arts. I'm poor. So I have some fun facts for you. I'm so ready. The lost boy who shows up at the girls' camp is played by Michael Lohan, Lindsay Lohan's real-life brother. That's cute. Wait, there's more. Oh, God. When Hallie arrives in London and meets Martin at the airport, sorry, Martin at the airport, at the point where the two begin their greeting, you can see Lindsay Lohan's mother holding her brother, Dakota Lohan, and beside her is Lindsay Lohan's other brother, Michael, and sister, Aliana Lohan. Okay, first of all, I didn't realize she had this many siblings. I assumed my whole life Lindsay was an only child. She's very only child-esque. Yes. I would say. <laughs> but also, what is this a family affair? Why is everyone in this movie? <laughs> and this is Lindsay Lohan's like first film too. So I'm assuming the director was just like, yeah, you guys, guys want to be extras? <laughs> you guys want to be in the movie <laughs> You're too. here anyway doing homework. You want to pop in for a minute? I truly think that must be what happened, right? That's so wild. I didn't know she had that many siblings. I know. I always assumed she was an only child. She's very, she acts like an only child. She I love you, Lindsay. She has very mental stability of an only child. <laughs> We're like roasting only children. No, no. She just, she doesn't act like she, only children are special. In a, in a less nice way of putting it, a little self-centered because they don't know what yeah. it's like to like share things like that. You well, know, she shared a whole movie, movie with apparently. Them, so. Well, I thought that was crazy. I was like, what the heck? Yeah, what? So, actress Joanna Barnes played the wicked girlfriend in The Parent Trap 1961 and plays the mother of the wicked girlfriend in this version. In the 1998 version, the wicked girlfriend's name is Meredith rather than Vicky. Uh, Joanna Barnes' character as the mother in the new Parent Trap is still named Vicky, however. That's really cute. Isn't that cute? I also read that she was like the only one from the original movie that like didn't die. So it's kind of sad. 
So they probably actually would have had other people in it, but because she was the only one alive, that's why she was the only one that made a that's cameo. That's so crazy. They all died. R.I.P. Even the, even the twins? I think the twins are alive. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. That's cute, though. But she was in it. This one's really cute. It's kind of long-winded, though, so stay with me. Ready? <laughs> Uh, the twins are named after the daughters of director Nancy Myers and producer Charles Shire. Their names are Annie Myers Shire and Hallie Myers Shire, both of whom are in the movie. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's Who's fam- not in this movie? Me. <laughs> it's a family affair. Jesus. So Hallie plays, the real Hallie, plays a girl at camp at the beginning who asks where the Navajo bunk is. And Annie plays the towel girl at the hotel who brings Elizabeth a first aid kit. The girl at camp is named Lindsay in the movie after Lindsay Lohan. Oh, my God. (laughs) Hang it up. (laughs) That's too much. It's too much for my brain. Too much much for my brain. This one is just really funny to me. I'm dying. In the movie, Dennis Quaid is engaged to a 26-year-old gold digger. Okay, let's not call her a gold digger. She's definitely a gold digger. It's fine. IMDb. It's cool. (laughs) She's a gold digger. Coincidentally, he married his fourth wife when she was 26 years old. Oh, no. As a result, his co-star, Elaine Hendricks, who played Meredith, tweeted to him, better watch out for those twins. (laughs) (laughs) And that is why I love the internet. She roasted him. Stop. That is hilarious. Super cute. That's incredible. Um, Also, she was definitely not great at playing a 26-year-old. No one looks like that when yeah. they're 26. I'm 28 and I don't look like that. I don't know. I guess. She was also <laughs> like a publicist or whatever. I'm like, there's no 26-year-old publicist. Yeah. Stop N- that. No. <laughs> no, seriously. She's like the assistant to the assistant of the head publicist Especially or something. Especially a shit. woman. Stop that. Uh, in the 1990s? <laughs> <laughs> Her assistant was a man, too. I loved that. Yeah, the that, that whole thing. I love Meredith. Go off. Sis. Yeah, she's a queen. I love she's her. She's definitely a gold digger, though. Yeah, um, it's fine. Somebody has to be right. In the hotel, Annie tells her mom that her dad is marrying Cruella DeVille. Natasha Richardson's sister, Joely, Jolie, J-O-E-L-Y, Joely, Jolie. Anyway, oh, yeah. um, Joely or Jolie Richardson. Sorry, sis. You can come on the pod if you want. We'll, we'll, <laughs> Tell we'll us how to say your name. <laughs> um, she plays Anita in the live action 101 Dalmatians. Wait, wait, wait. My brain is, is not comprehending. Yeah, they Natasha, do kind of look alike. They are identical. They are sisters, but they are like, they are, they look so close to each other. What the heck? Yeah, isn't that cute? That is really cute. I never realized they were sisters. Yeah. Mind blown. <laughs> Shook. That's she a good shooken. one. I can't wait to do that one. What the live, live action? action? Yeah. That's Yay, all I got. Yay, fun fact. There were some really good ones. Of course, we'll link it in the show notes, the IMDb trivia for The Parent Trap 1998. We start our beautiful, beautiful film on the QE2, the Queen Elizabeth II. And there's a bop playing. L is for the way you, you look. look. And me. me. And we have two lovely young people, and they got married on the ship. And we only ever see the back of their head. Clearly eloped. <laughs> they met on the ship they and they were like, on the ship and got married. I would absolutely do that. Yeah, I would too. Right? I mean, you have to know it's probably not going to go great. <laughs> Knock me up right here. Perfect. Let's go. I just well, want babies. Kat, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> and twins. And I want twins. This is my this is my ideal situation, actually. Because 11 years and nine months later, <laughs> to be exact, 11 years and nine months later. Yeah. Oh, uh, we are at Camp Walden. <laughs> yeah, we are. And we are with the wonderful and beautiful Lindsay Lohan. Lilo. I love her so much. I'm so mad she's destroyed herself. Go off those. And tried to <laughs> kidnap an entire family. She's crazy. <laughs> she really. I watched that video the other day. We were talking about with her dad, like Mean Girls was like our high school movie mm-hmm. of like our time. Mm-hmm. And he was like, ours was Grease. <laughs> and I was like, you're so old. That sucks. We were saying in the 80s, it was like the Breakfast Club. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what was yours, Dad? Grease. Oh, no. But I love Grease. I do, too. And we're going to do it for Patreon. So yeah. full circle. We mm-hmm. came full circle. We did. Bringing it back. Bringing it back. <laughs> <laughs> so we meet 
Hallie. She is a adorable little redheaded queen <laughs> from California. From Napa, California. Sorry, Napa, California. The, the other girls at Camp Walden are super impressed that her parents make wine. Yeah, she like immediately makes two friends within like four seconds. And I'm like, all right. I remember when it, we were little and you could just talk to someone for two seconds at the pool at the hotel and you were friends immediately. And you were like best friends. And also, you, played you mermaids. never went to camp. I never went to camp. That makes me really sad. I wanted to join Girl Scouts so bad, but there was never a troop in our area that was in my age group. I was a Girl Scout for only a couple years, two you or did three years. I didn't even make it past brownies. No, my troop, you guys, was so problematic. Oh my gosh. I remember that. I hope these girls are still out there and I hope they're thriving. But one of the girls' names was Tammy and she cried about everything. And her mom, Susan, was one of our camp counselors. And um, Susan was definitely a lesbian. Sorry, Suze. I mean, I hope she's living her life now. Her best lesbian life. And then our other counselor, her name was Dina. And she was also a lesbian. And I'm so convinced that Dina and Susan were lesbians together. I think they were together. I swear they were. And then Dina's daughter's name was Lauren. And she was like, a bossy know-it-all. I remember Lauren. And we all fucking hated her. And then, of course, Tammy and Lauren were, like, best friends, and we all would, like, talk shit about them. <laughs> and then Tammy would cry more. And then Lauren These would... seven-year-olds. And then Lauren would try to boss us around more. Isn't that so, like... I don't know why I remember that, like, so... <laughs> I even remember that Lauren was, like, Dina, a little bit. Susan, I hope you guys are living your lives right now together and you're happy i hope you're living your truths and i hope that tammy stopped being a little bitch and i hope lauren shut the fuck up <laughs> do you think they're doing well <laughs> find them on facebook i don't care enough <laughs> I do. I love looking people up that we used to know. I truly do not fucking care enough. I hope they're thriving. I hope all four of them are thriving, though. That's fair. They're still girls. They're all four still Girl Scouts. (laughs) The parents are also Girl Scouts. What's like the top level Girl Scout? I don't even know. Because you know know how like the Boy Scouts like Eagle Scout or whatever? Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Let's look it up. I need to know now. Oh, here it is. Okay. It's like Daisy Brownie Junior Mint. That's all I got. Cadets seniors and then ambassadors i hope they're all fucking ambassadors also i think they're just called juniors not not junior mint okay we went to camp it was fucking lit cat never went to camp we're gonna go we have to go camping we have to go camping and invite a bunch of friends (gasps) tragical camping trip oh my god let's all go and then we'll pretend we're at camp like we're 12 please we'll literally hang up banners to say camp walden oh my god let's do it we'll play poker okay poker (laughs) i barely even know her (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> at camp walden a limo pulls up and another Lindsay lohan gets out of the limo lilo number two <laughs> and this is miss annie and she is from london and her butler martin drops her off they do their secret handshake and a little ditty plays whenever they do it it's really cute I would like to point out that she has a caboodle and it matches her outfit. (laughs) First of all, when I tell you guys that I have had a caboodle saved on their website for years, I want one so bad. There's a really cute one that's like mermaid colors. It's literally teal, pink, and purple. Tell me those aren't my colors. I love that. Why don't you get it? I'm going to eventually. I want it for like travel with my makeup. You know what I mean? Like that's what it's for. They're really cute. I love caboodles. Who doesn't love a caboodle? I know, right? If you don't know what a caboodle is, you're too young to listen to this podcast. (laughs) I think every, I think caboodles are universal across all generations. (laughs) Martin. (laughs) Melissa Um, thinks he's a pedophile. (laughs) It's just, he's very, I understand that he spends like every waking moment with Mm -hmm. Annie Mm -hmm. and then he like really loves her and he's basically her father. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. Go ahead. Continue. Um, moving on <laughs> in the mess hall, Marva senior, who is the camp count. What is Marva a name? Also? Yeah. Does she like own the place? Is she the camp counselor? She's like the owner of the camp and she's also a camp counselor. And then Marva junior. Why is would you do daughter. that? Why would you ever do that to a child? And they're the Marvas. So Marva senior is getting strawberries and she looks over and asks Hallie, do you want some strawberries? And she's like, no, I'm allergic. And then she starts filling up her bowl with strawberries. And then she looks to her left and Hallie's over there now. But wait, it's not Hallie. It's Annie. And she says, how'd you get over there? And then she's like, I've been standing here the whole time. So they're both allergic to strawberries. Weird. I think I would die. I love strawberries. I'm sorry I'm not allergic to any food. The next day, <laughs> the next month, Tuesday at camp <laughs> on Wednesday at 3 p.m. <laughs> Hallie Parker is fencing and she's winning all of the matches. She's kicking ass. 
Yes. She's a good fencer. I guess so. We didn't have fencing at my camp. Do you have fencing in Napa, California? I don't. Is that like a hobby? Maybe she learned it there and she just got really good really fast. I don't know. I don't know why they fence. We had freaking racquetball at summer camp. Oh, yeah. Racquetball's fun. So Hallie is grabbing some water or something and she's looking for another opponent. And Annie takes her on. But they both have their fencing face masks on. <laughs> I don't know the face proper shields. term. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And so they don't actually ever see each other. And then they start fencing and they fence all over camp. All over camp. They end up over trees. They're over stumps. Then they're like up a building. They're like on like the <laughs> they're flying. The Spider-Man. Like, I don't know what's <laughs> happening here. They end up in like, what? what is that called? Like a water trough? Like, uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Like, I don't, who's there? Who's, the, who's troughing? A pig? Is there horses? <laughs> Maybe what's there's happening? horses. Is there horses? <laughs> there was some like hay bales. So there must be camp horses. Yeah. So they <laughs> fall into this water trough and they're facing away from each other marva jr is like all right shake hands with your opponent and they turn around <gasps> and they're the same person oh my gosh they're both Lindsay lohan except for they refuse to accept it and so they both start roasting each other yeah they're like well your nose is a little different and um you have more freckles and your hair is a weird shade you of orange big old ears yeah they're like what is wrong with your other? teeth you need braces <laughs> yeah they have the same the, mouth the exact same what the heck so <laughs> they're clearly the same person <laughs> do you know that literally until i was probably 19 I thought Lindsay Lohan had a twin. No, sweetheart. Not really 19. That's probably me being <laughs> okay. dramatic. But Thir- I feel 13. like, yeah. 14. And then when you came to like true preteen consciousness, I was you like, were like, holy oh, shit, it's the same bitch. It's just Lindsay Lohan. It's just two Lilos. <laughs> How did they do that in the 1990s? Movie magic. Wild. My favorite parts in this movie are when it's the back of both of their heads and the one is very clearly, clearly a, wig. a wig one of them's deaf's a wig a miscolored <laughs> horribly styled red-ish wig that they just put on some random 10 year old it's probably her fucking brother again <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably it's michael in a wig it's, it's just michael in a wig it probably is i wouldn't put it past them so anyway it's poker night at the navajos Obviously normal. I mean, we He's didn't 11 play year poker olds. either in camp. Playing poker. My I camp I, was boring, I guess. I'm almost 30 and I don't know how to play poker. <laughs> Is poker the one where you just gotta... No, no, no. Poker's the hard one where, yeah, you have to get, like... Specific order of cards. Spades and... And a royal flush. That's the flush. only one I know. It's and spades. a royal flush. <laughs> Hearts. <laughs> Triangle. No, no, they're diamonds. Triangle? Hearts, diamonds, spades. And there's another one. Clubs clubs yeah we smart yeah yeah girl we smart yeah <laughs> we know cards <laughs> we should learn poker okay okay we should have done that over quarantine <laughs> we well up. we'll probably have another one soon True. So. so it's poker night in navajos and annie and hallie are playing poker the loser has to jump in the lake Nate good that sounds like a good time if you ask me we did jump in the lake i remember one time we got to camp late and it was dark already and we weren't supposed to get in the lake until the next day but we all jumped in with our clothes on it was really fun that's cute and they were like be careful for alligators if you see any red glowing eyes get out of the water and i'm now that i'm thinking about it i don't think that's how alligators work (laughs) (laughs) I think we could have died. You probably honestly could have. Susan, Dina, explain yourselves. They were out making out they behind the, the were. bus. <laughs> I hope they're in love. I truly hope they're Lies and slander. <laughs> diminishing their character. But Being a lesbian is not diminishing their well, character. Well, they were both married, so they'd be... That's okay. They wrecking they each were, other. They home. were living their truth. <laughs> Oh my God. Anyway, so Hallie wins. So Annie has to jump in the lake naked. And when she jumps in, of course, the girls uh, steal her clothes, which is rude. So now it's a full on just prank war. rivalry, a mm-hmm. prank war. Mm-hmm. They're out to get each other. So they start a prank war and Annie puts Hallie's bed and her furniture on the roof of their cabin. And then... Hallie's like, we got to get back at them so hard. We're going to get those freaking Navajos. This part is too much for me. It's a lot. First of all, somebody would have woken up. I'm just saying. Yeah. Hallie and her friends sneak into Annie's cabin 
and they put honey everywhere and syrup everywhere and string all over the cabin. Shaving cream. They shaving cream one girl with a fantastical wig. There's like water balloons. Water balloons. And basically all the girls wake up and they're all freaking the fuck out. Okay, I'm just saying the girl covered in honey, like I cannot even imagine being covered in honey. It seems like the worst thing that could ever possibly happen. I'm a very sensory based person. And just the thought of having honey, not just like on your fingers, but literally your entire body and your hair. I would need to shower for three days. I would. Yeah. I can't look at I would at jump her. in the lake and let the gators get me at I that point. I can't look at the girl covered in honey. Mm-mm. I can't even look at her. Mm-mm. It's so bad. Mm-mm. Hallie and her friends are staring into the cabin windows. And of course, they're laughing at them because they're all freaking out. And who walks over but Marva Sr. and Marva Jr.? It's surprise inspection day. Surprise inspection. Hallie is trying to get the Marvas to not inspect the cabin that Annie's in because they honeyed a girl up in there. Yeah. And she goes in anyway and there's syrup on the door. So the syrup falls on Marva Sr. Probably a little got on Marva Jr. I'm sure it did. And then the fan starts running and feathers fly everywhere. So now the girl covered in honey is also Uh, covered in feathers. I didn't even think about that. Chocolate syrup is fine because that's not as sticky. Like imagine being covered in honey. Yeah, any of it. I I can't. can't do it. No. A water balloon falls on Annie's head and... In the IMDb trivia, which I didn't write down, but she actually had to have a pin in her hair because that balloon would have like broken her neck if it didn't explode. It was a very large it water balloon. It was a balloon. big balloon. How did they know that pin was like going to like go through her head? Um, It was the 90s and no one gave a fuck. So they did that. <laughs> I hate the thought of that. So the Marvas are um pretty upset. And they know that it's Annie and Hallie who are responsible for all of this. Mm-hmm. So they get marched up to the isolation cabin, which is definitely child abuse. But (laughs) yeah, I don't think that's allowed. Also, they make everyone else in the camp also walk all the way to the isolation camp with them. I feel like it was a solid like half a mile away, though. I don't think it was very far because they probably had to go and check on them like every four hours or something like that. The Marvas, they couldn't just leave them there. It seemed like they did. Annie and Hallie are in the isolation cabin and there's a very bad storm and the window gets stuck open and Annie helps Hallie to close it. But Annie's pictures are flying everywhere and Hallie's pictures are flying everywhere. And they start sharing photos with each other. And Hallie is talking about her stuffed animal cuppy, which is like the grungiest (laughs) bunny teddy bear. I don't know. A questionable animal, stuffed animal. And Annie's like, oh, he's so cute. She's trying to be nice. But Hallie, you got to throw Cuppy in the trash, girl. I'm so sorry. (laughs) That thing has seen better days. So they're sharing photos with each other. And Hallie is like, do you want some Oreos? And Annie's like, oh, my God, I freaking love Oreos. I always eat them with peanut butter. And Hallie's like, oh, my God, I eat them with peanut butter. Weird. Do you know how many calories peanut butter and Oreos is? I know you don't. I don't. I'm asking the void. (laughs) I love Oreos and peanut butter, though. That's like, peanut butter Oreos are really good. It's so many calories. That's okay. I guess they're in the isolation cabin, though. So. They're also 11. <laughs> that doesn't mean they shouldn't be eating that much. They're fine. I'm scared for them. And this is when they realize that they also have the same birthday, October 11th. How are we just now realizing that they're twins? Like, I don't, they're quite obviously the same person. Well, Annie figures it out before Hallie does. I'm pretty sure she's like, um, that's really weird that, you know, you have the same birthday as me and we look exactly alike and we both like peanut butter and Oreos and we're both allergic to strawberry. Also, you know, I have like one photo of my dad and you have one photo of your mom. So like, why don't you go get that? (laughs) Because (laughs) I'm starting to think we may have been separated at birth, girl. (laughs) Maybe. So Annie and Hallie both go grab the photos of their parents that they've never met. And Hallie has a picture of her mom and Annie has a picture of her dad. And it's ripped right down the middle. So weird. And it's their wedding photo from the QE2. Oh my God. And they realize that their twin sisters separated at birth. Incredible. How cute. It is pretty cute. This was the first time in the movie I got goosebumps. (laughs) Yeah, like I haven't seen this movie 
50 times. I still get goosebumps and cry. I get goosebumps every time. Oh. Same. Mm. So crazy. So cute. So this is when they decide that they are going to swap lives. They are like, you want to meet mom? You want to meet dad? Why We're not? Just swap lives. What could go wrong? We look exactly alike. But then they realize that Annie has long hair and Hallie has her ears pierced. So poor Annie, bro. Yeah, she really goes through it, doesn't she? Yeah, Hallie's just sitting here like living Normal. the dream. And she's like, I'm going to cut your hair and pierce your ears. Let's do it. The piercing ears part really, really was not a good time to watch. Yeah, I could do without the seeing of the ears being pierced. But now Annie and Hallie look exactly alike. Mm-hmm. The end of camp. Everything is ending. Everyone's hugging. They're saying bye to the Marvas. And Annie, a.k.a. actually Hallie, is getting picked up in her limo to fly back to London. So Hallie makes it to London and Martin is picking her up at the airport and they do their handshake. So cute. Yeah. Annie had to teach Hallie the handshake because... Her and Martin just be doing that handshake all day long, I guess. I guess so. It's super cute, though. It is really cute. So then Martin takes Hallie to, quote unquote, her house. And the house is so cute. I love the house. I think it's super cute. It's very (laughs) British looking. It's because it's in London. I know. I love it. It's super cute. So then Hallie goes into the house and she gets to meet Grandfather, who is... Annie's like best friend, essentially. Like they're super, super close. She says he smells like tobacco. And I'm like, I I like that smell too, girl. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she like hugs him and smells him. And he's like, what are you doing? (laughs) She's like, I'm making memories. So cute. And then Hallie meets her mother for the very first time. It's so cute. And I got goosebumps again. I cried. Oh my God. I did more than get goosebumps. I cried. Hallie and Annie's mother is Elizabeth James, Mm -hmm. and she gets a call from her studio that the photo shoot at her gallery is just not going well. Yeah. So she's like, would it be terribly boring if you went with me to my job? Of course, Hallie is like, no, let's go. Yeah, she makes like... (laughs) Gorgeous wedding gowns, and she owns a studio where she makes the gowns and she also photographs them. And oh, I love wedding dresses. Obsessed. And so Elizabeth James gets to her studio with her daughter, who she thinks is Annie, but it's actually Hallie. (laughs) And she totally fixes the whole photo shoot. So it goes great. And then when they're walking back home, Hallie is basically like, What what's up with my dad? What where's my dad? Do you like dads? Do you talk to dad? Can you, I want to know about my dad. I like when she goes, I want to ask you about the F word. And her mom is like, you want to ask me about what? And she goes, my father. (laughs) Girl, this is not the time for the birds and the bees talk. What is you doing? The F word. That was really good. (laughs) So she's like, we met on the Queen Elizabeth too. And then um, we broke up. Yeah. The end. That's That's, about all the info she gets. Yeah, that's about it. (laughs) We cut to Napa Airport where Annie, as Hallie, is getting picked up by her dad, Mm -hmm. Dennis Quaid. Ugh. Dennis freaking Quaid. I'll be his fifth wife. Yeah. Or if he broke up with that 26-year-old yet. (laughs) He is very pretty. He's just like a Mm rugged-looking dad. Mm Mm-hmm. And I love him. He's very attractive. I love him. So Nick Parker, Hallie's father, picks her up at the airport, but it's actually Annie. Mm -hmm. And then when they're driving back to the house, Annie is rambling on and calling her dad, dad, like a million times. And he's driving with his cowboy hat on, just looking really hot Mm -hmm. and smiling and looking like really good. And like... (laughs) He's like, why are you calling me dad so much? She's like, I just missed saying the word dad, you know? I didn't get to say dad the entire time I was at camp. (laughs) It's been like two weeks, really. (laughs) It was like eight weeks or whatever. I was like, damn, imagine not having your brat with you for two months. That's nice. So at the vineyard, the house on the vineyard, Annie meets... Uh, Chessie. A legend and icon. This woman has played the best friend in every 90s movie that has ever existed. Her hair is honestly perfection. Mm -hmm. She is like, she has like the nicest shape. 
You know what I mean? She just looks like somebody I want to hold. Yeah. I want to hug. Yeah. I want to love. Yeah. <laughs> just love her. So much. I love her. Her face is just beautiful. I mean, I'm a fan. I love Chessie. I do too. <laughs> a legend and icon. Dad goes out to the patio and he's like, hey, kiddo, come out here when you're ready. There's somebody I want you to meet. And Annie is like, who the fuck is this bitch? And Chessie's like, oh, that's Meredith Blake. She's a publicist, a 26 year old publicist. OK, sis. Yeah, like, right. You don't know anything about anything yet. I know I'm 26. <laughs> <laughs> I could not be a publicist. Not like a well-rounded, <laughs> successful. You know what I'm saying? I like, just think that's a lot of responsibility for a dumb dumb. And all 26 year olds are dumb dumbs. <laughs> yeah. You also that's like one of those careers you have to like climb the ladder. There's no way she has like her own clients at the oh, age of no. 26. Her daddy got her that job, Kat. Come for on sure. Now. For sure. Annie goes out to the pool to swim, and Meredith Blake is out on the pool deck, fully, fully clothed. In a dress and a hat. Super casual. Don't do that, girl. She Wear has a, a nice body. Suit. Yeah, you've got a nice body. Show it off. Come on now. She can't get in the pool. You're trying to bag the hot man over there with all his money? Wear a bathing suit. The chlorine will turn her bleach she don't gotta get in the. Green. She don't got to get in the pool. You just sit next to it looking hot. I think she's like just stopping by, though. I don't yes. think she was like there to yeah. swim around and have... We're just roasting her for no reason. <laughs> so... Meredith is asking Annie about camp and Annie jumps in the water and gets her soaking wet. And she basically tells Meredith that her father is a slut. Yeah. <laughs> and that she's not the first or the last woman that is going to come around the vineyard or whatever. Yeah. And then Meredith also gets a call and it's somebody asking for Nick to do a charity event. And she was like, oh, no, he's going to be like out of the country like that weekend. Sorry, he can't do it. He's not going out of town. She's a liar. I mean, I lie to get out of things I don't want to do. So. But like he doesn't know about it. She's just don't you well, want him to publicist. make money? No, she wants to drink the wine and ride that dick. It just doesn't make <laughs> sense to me because like as his publicist, do you want him to be seen so we can make more money okay well he didn't want to do that dumb fucking charity event i'm on meredith's side on this one sorry mm. sounds fake she d is fake ah uh, that's true but sometimes there's a time place to be fake this wasn't it <laughs> so hallie and annie talk on the phone later on that day and annie explains the whole situation she's like dad's trying to marry this 26 year old thought so can we like switch places back already so we can get mom and dad to meet again so they can fall in love again so meredith blake won't marry dad and hallie is like no i want more time with mom give me like give me a few days also can we talk about <laughs> In 1998, the astronomical phone bill of calling long distance from California to frickin' London. Yeah, they don't care, Kat. They're rich. Have you seen their houses? I I don't care how rich you are. I think your parents would still beat your ass. <laughs> they probably don't even notice. They're like, oh, weird. The phone bill is $490 this month instead of $200. Interesting. Wild. Don't Wild. care. Pay the bill. Ugh. That's what it's like to be rich. So... Annie goes to see her dad at the vineyard and she's trying to ask about her mom and he's not budging at all. And then they go on a horseback ride and Nick, Annie's dad, is trying to ask her if she's ready to go on her camping trip before school. And then he's also trying to ask her about Meredith and she is like, fuck Meredith and like literally turns her horse around and heads back home. Yeah, she like runs away. <laughs> she already knows he's gonna ask her like, is it cool if I marry Meredith? And she's like not having it. Also, can we talk about Dennis Quaid in a cowboy hat again? I just can't. And he's like riding a horse mm. through a vineyard. That's that's it for me. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a beautiful sight. Annie is in the house and she is rambling in French <laughs> or something along the lines. Yeah. French, right? Yeah. And she doesn't realize that Chessie is sitting in the chair in the living room. So she gets up and she's like, are you speaking French? And Annie is like, no, I, I don't. I mean, yeah, I learned French at camp. And then Chessie pretty much calls her out on like her weird behavior. Their family dog is reacting to Annie weird. And now she's speaking French and there's like things that she should know, like how to open one of their doors. She's barely eating like she used yeah, to. Yeah. And Chessie's like, something is weird here. You're making weird phone calls in the middle of the night. What is going on? And then she's like if I wouldn't know any better I would say you were and then she's like no that's crazy you can't be and then she's like I can't be what 
And then Chessie's like, Annie, is that you? And then they share a moment and they hug. So Chessie knows that mm-hmm. Hallie is actually Annie. Yeah. We love Chessie. Chessie's in on it. Chessie's number one. And then dad walks in really confused because now Chessie is just hugging Annie and sobbing. She's a puddle. Yeah. And they're both Annie and Chessie are like, it's nothing. Everything's normal. Uh, Move along, dad. Move along. So dad tells Annie that he and Meredith are engaged and Annie is not about it. She is not happy. And Annie runs off and goes up to her room. And this is when dad and Meredith go out to the patio and they're talking Freaking Meredith pulls out a goddamn dinner bell and rings it to get Chessie to bring them drinks. Ma'am, no, this is, we don't need a dinner bell. Well, she is the help, but she, yeah, she doesn't need a dinner bell. What the, what the heck? I hated that part that I would have decked her in the face, but that's just me. So Chessie's not happy about the dinner bell, but she goes and gets them drinks anyway, because it is kind of her job. But uh, dad and Meredith are talking about Annie's reaction. So Meredith says that she's going to have a woman to woman chat with Hallie, a.k.a. Annie. So Meredith goes and talks to Annie, a.k.a. Hallie, and she is telling her, I'm going to marry your father, whether you like it or not. And she's like, no, you're not. You're a gold digger. Mic drop. That's pretty much the conversation. (laughs) Yeah, she literally is like, I don't like you and you're not getting my dad's money. Yeah, pretty much. Back in London, Annie has faxed Hallie. Yeah. <laughs> a photo of a dog. A and it just says, machine. It says 911. Help. <laughs> help. SOS. So Martin gets the fax. So he holds it behind his back. And then when he goes to pour more wine for grandfather, he like shows it behind his back to Hallie slash Annie and is like, your little friend trying to fax you dog photos. <laughs> <laughs> dog photos. <laughs> Hallie runs to a payphone to call Annie. And what? We are fully in the 90s. We got a fax. We got a payphone. And Annie is telling Hallie about the wedding. She's like, we have to switch back. Like, dad's getting married to this thought. Like, <laughs> exact words. We can't have this. This hoe over here. Hallie tells Annie, okay, I will tell mom in the morning so we can switch back. And as Hallie is leaving the phone booth... Grandpa catches her. Uh Uh-oh. He heard the whole thing. I think he knew the whole time. I think so, too. I think he knew. And he's like, you're Hallie, aren't you? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, tell me everything, sis. Spill the tea, Christine. Spill the tea, sis. (laughs) So Grandpa brings Hallie back to the house, and he makes her tell Mom and Mom is a hot mess. <laughs> Cue so me cute. crying again. The goosebumps. The goosebumps. My 28th time having goosebumps. More crying from Kat. <laughs> so obviously Elizabeth now knows that they have to switch the girls back. Mm-hmm. So the next day she's packing to go to America to switch her daughters back. And she is freaking out. She's like, I haven't seen Nick in 11 years. She's like a hot mess. She's like chain smoking, like chugging glasses of wine. What do I wear? Which is just like me on a daily basis. And of course, <laughs> Martin, her BFF Martin is like, I would wear that little black dress then. That looks so good on you with those legs, girl. Ooh. And she's like, won't you come with us? Like, not as our butler, but like legit as my 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 gay best friend. <laughs> Except for he's not gay. But I swear he, he is, was. Though. Maybe he's a bi legend. I don't know. He could be a bi legend. I'm gonna go with that. Martin a bi legend potential. There's no pedophile. way that's a straight man. <laughs> potential <laughs> pedophile. Yikes. And then Hallie lies to mom saying that, yeah, dad knows we're coming. She didn't lie. She crossed her fingers behind her back. It's different. If you if you lie, but you have your fingers crossed behind your back, it's not a lie. Well, Martin straight up calls her a liar. So, <laughs> so the girls have basically planned a surprise meeting of Nick Parker and Elizabeth James at the Stafford Hotel in California. Fancy. So fancy. Unfortunately, Meredith is also going to be there. Yes. So we cut to the Stafford Hotel and Nick and Meredith are seeing the event space that they are going to potentially have their wedding at. A limo pulls up on the front drive and Hallie and Elizabeth 
get out of the limo. And Elizabeth is uh, hammered. Yeah, hammered. She, yeah, she doesn't hammered. like flying. So she's she, also about to see the father of her children that she hasn't seen in eleven years. Yeah, so she gets a little litty as she's allowed. Um, she's stumbling. She's not wearing her shoes. She's a little bit of a mess. Elizabeth is walking through the lobby of the hotel, completely wasted, and she's walking by the elevator bank. And she looks over into one of the elevators and who is standing in there? Nick Parker. And he looks at her and basically like falls on the wall of the elevator trying to size her up. Yeah. I would also like to point out during this part, Meredith Blake said perf. And I was like, oh my God, Meredith Blake invented perf. (laughs) The amount of times a day that I say perf is stupid. I say that so much. And she invented it. 1998, who would have known? So at this point, the dog Sammy runs straight to the real Hallie and is super excited to see her because he's had fake Hallie this whole time. Chessie realizes that both the girls are finally there. It's so cute. So Elizabeth goes upstairs to see the girls. This is when she gets to hug them together for the third time. It makes me so crazy. It's so cute. And then Elizabeth is trying to sober up in her room and she's trying to figure out what to do. And she's mad at the girls because she's like, Nick Parker did not know I was going to be in this hotel today. I could see it written all over his face. And Hallie and Annie are like, "Uh, yeah, it was uh, we uh, surprised Surprise to you. Surprise. Also, surprise. He's engaged to that blonde woman you saw him making out with. Oops, sorry. We forgot to tell you. We want you to break them up. Yeah, about that. So at this point, Chessie and Martin are also in the hotel room and they meet for the first time and they just, they just hit it off. It's a true love. The help. <laughs> <laughs> the help. The help is in love. <laughs> they have a moment. At this point, Elizabeth tells the girls to fuck off because she's mad at them and she's hungover. And she's starting to get less drunk, more hungover. Yeah, the, <laughs> the worst, the worst part of being drunk. And she goes down to the bar and asks the bartender for like that hangover, cure, the the egg and the tomato sauce or whatever. I don't fucking know. Yeah, whatever it is. I drink Pedialyte Pops like a normal person. Yeah, we just chug a couple of those <laughs> and move on. And this is when Meredith is like, oh my gosh, are you Elizabeth James? I totally want you to design my wedding dress. I actually just faxed your office today. More faxing. (laughs) We love to fax. So (laughs) wild that you're here right now. And so Elizabeth and Meredith meet, but Meredith doesn't know that Elizabeth is the mother of Nick's daughter. She also doesn't know that they're twins, but I mean, go ahead and marry the guy, I guess. (laughs) On the pool deck. Why are we on the pool deck? Not too sure. Um, <laughs> no one's in a bathing suit ever. <laughs> Nick is in a suit. Yeah. And Elizabeth is walking out onto the pool deck. Why are they going to the pool deck? Why? Is she going to take a dip in her suit? I don't understand why they went to the pool deck. Baby, I don't know what's going on either. <laughs> just, I'm just here. Why are they on the pool deck? I don't know. Anyway, Nick sees Elizabeth from across the pool and he knocks over a table and a waiter and he is like (laughs) causing a scene he falls into the pool fully dressed elizabeth is dying of laughter inside and then nick gets out of the pool and they meet for the first time in like literally 10 to 11 years it's pretty cute and then the girls come over and nick is Stopping wet in his suit. And he's like, the fuck is going on here? Yeah, he's finally starting to realize that the girls know each other. And then he hugs them for the first time. They didn't have time for the wig in this scene, though. He hugs them one at a time. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't bother. They're like, we got to wrap up filming. (laughs) Don't put Michael Lohan in (laughs) in the wig. We're just going to do two scenes. Film it twice. Let's change your outfit. (laughs) So it's clear that Nick and Elizabeth are in love. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, (laughs) you're not wrong. But Nick got his eyebrow in the pool. And so Liz is dabbing his bloody eyebrow. And then Meredith comes down to the pool deck and she's like, oh, Nick, you met the designer of my wedding dress. And he's like, oh, you two already know each other. And then it's so awkward. This is when Meredith meets 
the mother of Nick's now twin yeah. daughters. She also realizes Elizabeth James. Now that there's two of the little redhead brats. She's like, oh, there's two shitheads now. She literally screams. Like, this isn't a <laughs> horror movie, ma'am. Uh, so uh, that evening, Elizabeth is in her little black dress looking like a manjillion bucks. Mm-hmm. And the girls rented a boat and take Nick and Elizabeth to dinner on the boat. It's a yacht. It's a fucking boat. <laughs> and basically they're trying to recreate the night that Liz and Nick got married and Martin and Chessie are there to serve dinner and wine. It's so cute. And the girls just leave. They're very responsible 11 year olds. They're just looking <laughs> in through the window. Pretty much. <laughs> and they're spying. So Liz and Nick are chatting and they're trying to figure out like why they even broke up. And Liz is like, well... I left for London. You didn't come after me. And he was like, I didn't know you wanted me to. And then they don't like get back together. Like in that moment, like what? Yeah. What? So disrespectful. Also, Chessie and Martin have another moment where they like near <laughs> make out when they're standing there. Oh like, my God. In a very small galley way. It's they're so cute. cute. They're very cute. Martin and Chessie sit in a tree. The girls are talking about the camping trip with mom and dad and the girls are like, well, why don't we all go on the camping trip together before school? And then that way we can have some family time before we all go our separate ways. Elizabeth and Nick are like, great. Sounds like a plan. And then Elizabeth invites Meredith because Meredith is like, I don't know. What, you're all going on a little family camping trip without me? Yeah. You're going with your ex-wife to a camping trip? I don't like that. Yeah. And so she's like, Meredith, why don't you come? It'll be so fun. The five of us in the woods. (laughs) And then she dips. Elizabeth is like, well, I'm actually not going. Yeah, Elizabeth is like, you know, you four have fun. Get to know each other. The girls can get to know their new mom. Like, go have fun. She knew what she was doing. Oh, she absolutely knows what she's doing. But (laughs) the girls are pissed. Mm -hmm. They're super pissed. Meredith is out of shape. They're hiking up to the campsite and... She's super mad at her personal trainer. Even I can last longer hiking. That is the biggest lie that's ever come out of your mouth, first of all. (laughs) Nuh-uh. And second of all, personal trainers can only do so much when you only eat a glass of wine and a cracker. Yeah, ma'am. Every day. Right. (laughs) It's not helpful, Meredith. So we all know the girls love their pranks. So when they stop to let Meredith rest for the umpteenth time one of the girls shoves a bunch of rocks in meredith's bag her like prada bag yeah and then meredith needs water so one of the girls excuse me meredith needs her evian i'm sorry don't get it twisted i'm so sorry meredith needs her evian so one of the girls hands her a water bottle but they put a lizard on it it was an evian (laughs) whatever and There's a lizard on the outside of the water bottle and Meredith loses her absolute mind. Ma'am, it is just a lizard. You are you are going to see so much worse while you're out in the woods. I'm just saying. You keep saying water bottle like it's not Evian. Oh my God, whatever. (laughs) So then after she's done freaking out over the lizard on a water bottle, one of the girls picks up the same lizard and puts it on the top of Meredith's head. This lizard ends up crawling down her face and into her mouth. It's a no for me. Uh, Listen, I'm not, I'm, little crawly things really don't bother me that much, but if it crawled in my mouth, I think I would die. Don't like that. don't love it. (laughs) Don't like that. So we're at the campsite and it's by a lake. It's honestly the most beautiful campsite ever. I want to know where it is. They're eating trout for dinner. (laughs) Meredith's favorite. And Meredith won't eat the trout. She's like, I'll just wait for breakfast. Like, what are we eating for breakfast? And they're like, um, trout. Trout. (laughs) (laughs) And then she's getting eaten up by mosquitoes. And she's like, this stuff isn't working. So Nick takes it. And he's like, well, that's because this is sugar water. Nick is like, damn, my daughters are funny as fuck. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I thought one by themselves was really problematic. But now you put two of them together and their pranks are just too good. So Meredith decides to go to bed and she's clicking sticks together (laughs) so that no bears or mountain lions will come after her or whatever. And he's like, yeah, that's not that doesn't do anything. No. Also, like, why does she keep believing them? Meredith, grow a brain, mama. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. So then they pull what I think is the best prank of them all. During the middle of the night, the girls sneak into Meredith's tent and they pull her blow up air mattress into the lake and kind of push her off. And she floats out into the middle of the lake. She wakes up in the morning and this is my nightmare. 
with a giant scary looking bird on her chest. Cat would be fine with the lake. It's the bird on the chest. Yeah, I really wouldn't mind the lake. It, the bird, however, it's like literally sitting directly into her face. It's like pecking her Oh face. my God, I would die. Cat's nightmare. I would absolutely die. So she's getting eaten by a bird and she screams and stands up on her air mattress and falls into the lake. Then she swims to shore and Nick is staring at her like she's a crazy woman and the girls are cackling and she says that she's going to ship the girls to Switzerland as soon as they're married. And she's like, you have to choose me or the girls. And he says, the girls, mama, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you've been you've been in my life for two and a half months these have been my daughters for 11 years. Yeah. Let's let's be real here. He's like, my daughters who are hilarious and gave you sugar water to keep mosquitoes off. And told you to click sticks together to keep away mountain lions. Also, he needs a hiking lady, not a not her. Yeah. Who brings a Prada bag hiking? Fuck Meredith. Meredith Who Blake. has a Prada bag also? Yeah, also that. Go to Target and buy a $25.99 backpack like a normal bitch. Facts. Facts. I hate designer things. Okay, I'm sorry. Getting off my soapbox. And <laughs> so they go home and the girls are obviously in trouble. And Nick makes pasta that night for him and Elizabeth. And they're in the cellar picking out a wine. And he shows her that he has a bottle of wine from the QE2. Yeah, he has like this cute little like wine cellar that's like for specific, very special wines. And it has their wedding wine in it. Yeah. He also says he bought every bottle of that wine. Yeah. I was like, heck? obsessed much? Okay, Nick. Go off, sis. <laughs> he owns all the bottles of that wine. I mean, do what you got to do. So they're about to like make out in the cellar and then Elizabeth leaves. Liz, Sad. stop being like that, girl. Sad. What's wrong with you? I don't know. The next day, Elizabeth and Annie leave for London and they get home. Elizabeth goes in to talk to granddad in his office and his newspaper is up. And when he puts the newspaper down, it's not granddad. It's Hallie. And Elizabeth is like, what are you doing here? And she's like, well, we actually took a way better flight that got here way earlier. And she's like, who is we? And then Nick Parker comes in and grabs Elizabeth and he says, I came after you this time or something along those lines. Don't remember exactly. (laughs) And then they make out Nick and Liz 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 they're so cute and then what happens they get remarried on the ship back on the QE2 and at their wedding Martin asks Chessie to marry him. And this is where Kat and I had a full blown sisterly argument about people proposing at your wedding. This is my moment. If you take it from me, I will murder you. Point blank, period. This is my day. I don't care who you are, how close we are. If you get engaged (laughs) at my wedding, you are dead to me. And I said, if your boyfriend or girlfriend asked me can I propose to Kat at your wedding I would say fuck yes because that would but you're my sister like I don't care (laughs) it's your day I would be pissed at my significant other for doing that to you but our whole family and loved ones are already there to like witness it don't care that's what I'm saying like Chessie and Martin's whole family was already there to witness their engagement don't care it would only make my day a million times better it would ruin my day this day is about me. I mean, if it was like just a friend or something, I'd be super mad. But if like I can understand Chessie and Martin at Nick and Liz's second wedding getting engaged. No, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. I refuse this narrative. I think it is disrespectful. This is that person's day. They spent oh my God. thousands of dollars to have the day be about them. And then you're going to make it about you. Okay. No, <laughs> nope. Absolutely not. Anyway, (laughs) this is the best fucking movie ever. It is. It's pretty good. The end. Yay. (laughs) Go Lilo and Lilo. You did it. (laughs) Lilo and Lilo. I don't know where I'm going to put this one. Me either. Would you like to go first? That's so kind of you. I think I will. This might surprise you. I gave this movie a 10 out of 10. Oh, wow. It's a perfect 
90s film. It feels good. like childhood. I love Lindsay Lohan. I love everybody in it. I love Dennis Quaid. I love Chessie. It's a lot I love of camping. Martin. Love camp. I love their little handshake. It's just a really good movie. Mm-hmm. I love the caboodle. I do love the caboodle. <laughs> That's why I really gave it a 10. <laughs> For the matching caboodle. It's just an all-around very, very good movie. I put it at my number 10. So it is under Princess and the Frog, but above Lion King. I Ooh. mean, I really like this movie. I would rather watch this than The Lion King, for sure. I feel that. All right. Here we go. I know this will come as a shock to no one, but I also gave it a 10 out of 10. I'm I'm flabbergasted. I just have no words. Um, So mine is sitting at number 20. So it's underneath Onward, but above Inside Out. Cute. Yeah. This is a good one. All right. For our next episode, we're going to do another Patreon episode. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Drum roll, please. Ooh, it's a good one. Oliver and Company. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah. I'm gonna cry. This is Brenna's pick. I love ooh, that name. Ooh. This is her second favorite. I don't know what her first favorite is because I didn't write it down because I'm a bad um, bookkeeper, I suppose. Brenna, I just want to tell you I love your name. But that means we already did her first one. That's so true. that's good. That's true. <laughs> Very true. If you guys want an episode dedicated to you, uh, the link to our Patreon is down in the show notes. Yeah. It's an app, guys. There's an app. There is an app. Did you know there's an app? It's easy pretty peasy. Yeah. Lemon squeezy. It's easy to use. <laughs> it's user friendly. Okay, guys. Okay. Thanks for listening. We love you. All of our socials are in the show notes. And Twilight's coming out soon. Oh my God. It's going to be the best. Probably going to take over as my favorite episode. We were crying recording it. So, yeah. Could it be better than Harry Potter? It might I think be. it might be. It, we were crying recording. Yeah. So if you want to listen to our bonus episodes about non-Disney movies, become a patron. We also have really funny videos. Yeah. Our videos are hilarious. The other night I made Kat watch one that I had just edited in her bed with her and I spit beer on her. She, so. she quite literally <laughs> spit beer on me in my bed. So if you want to know how funny we think we are, <laughs> go to Patreon and watch our videos. Yeah. They are funny, funny, funny. They're hilarious. Anyway. Love you. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, that was beautiful. Did you hear that? Yeah. Thank you so much. Nice vibrato you thank had you there. So, I thank you so much. You've been practicing. These opinions are our own and are in no way associated with the film or the film's production company. The cover art for Tragical was created by Johnny the Alchemist. The theme song for Tragical was produced by Ja Reezy. Contact info for both artists can be found on their Instagrams, which are linked in the show notes. Thanks for listening to Tragical. I'm also poor. I just shelled out $900 I for bought, a new laptop. I just bought $100 with the Trixie Mattel makeup. So, By the way, you owe me money. Great. <laughs> Thanks for that. I love you soda. Really big soda. Really big soda, RBS, RBS, really big soda. The girls have planned a, basically a surprise meeting between Nick Parker and Elizabeth Taylor at (laughs) (laughs) Elizabeth Elizabeth Taylor is just the same (laughs) in the movie. (laughs) She's walking by the elevator. (laughs) The what? The elevator. Let's get together, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tragical.